Good evening, everybody. <clears throat> this is Amy with 100 Plus Abandoned Dogs of Everglades, Florida. I'm gonna wait for a few more of you to jump on. Thanks for the clear, Karen. Hello, Heidi. This has been probably one of the most stressful days and it's still going on right now. What a horror, it's just been such a horrible day. I am beside myself. I'm so frustrated. I'm so drained. Hi, Patty. Hi, Christine. Good evening, Laura. Just going to wait just a few more minutes. Because once I start speaking and then people jump on and I have to keep repeating myself, I don't have the energy, honestly. I just don't have it. I know. I wear myself, my heart on my sleeve. What can I say? Thank you for donating, Colleen. Thank you, Laura. so much going on right now that I don't even know where to begin so I'm gonna take a deep breath and I'm just gonna start from the beginning of today I'm just gonna focus on today when I'm doing this update what I'm going to ask from all of you is please do not ask questions about how's this dog how's that dog I would really love to stay focused and I'd love to answer everybody's questions the best that I can I'm going to try to keep a clear mind because there's so much going on right now in my head. So first of all, I would like to say thank you to each and every one of you that has made a donation towards mommy and puppies. So we don't have names. We don't, I don't even know the sexes of these dogs. I'm going to tell you that a friend of ours in rescue, um, Dana, reached out to me privately and asked if I could assist with puppies. Puppies only. She said a coworker of hers has the mama, wants to keep the mommy, and, w and agrees to have her spayed, and we would help her with that and cover the spay to stop the reproduction of all these unwanted dogs. There's no reason. There's so many dogs being killed every single day. People need to educate themselves, and they need to spay and neuter. It's not cute. It's not cute having puppies so that you can just hand them to any random person off the street without any medical attention. So Dana reached out to me and asked me if I could assist and take in the puppies. I was told from the beginning there were eight puppies and that this man gave away one of the puppies to a friend of his. So there were gonna be seven puppies and I said, that's fine. But the only way I can take them is if they are parvo negative. I cannot take on another parvo case after what we just went through with our last parvo dose, spending how many thousands, I mean $18,000 we spent on the last parvo case. So I said, Dana, bring them to the vet and get them tested. She said, can I bring them to your vet? from Miami up to our way, which is Fort Lauderdale. I said, yes, I made the appointment for three o'clock today for her to bring the puppies. And I said, bring the mommy. Mommy needs to be tested as well. So she drove up. I had Tammy and Tiffany meet her at the vet's office. They brought the first puppy into the hospital. I was in Loxahatchee all day with, with Carol. We had movers moving out so much, a truckload of stuff. We were there at nine o'clock this morning, packing up the truck, 
getting everything ready. I came and picked up Carol, got my dog settled, drove up to Loxahatchee, started unpacking, sweating, getting everything settled, cleaning and painting all day nonstop. My wonderful friend Leslie and Kevin came up today. They hung out with us. They helped us. They brought up a scaffold so Carol could reach the high ceilings. As I'm up in Loxahatchee doing all of this, I receive a call from Tiffany that the, the one of the puppies tested positive for Parvo. And most likely, they're all going to be testing positive. We know how it works. And I was like, I cannot take these puppies. I cannot take on another case of Parvo puppies. And I'm pacing and I'm pacing. And I hung up with Tiffany. I called her right back. And I was like, if we don't take these puppies, they're going to die. They're going to die. There's nowhere for them to go. And so I immediately told her to take them to Blue Pearl. So they were going to take them all to Blue Pearl. Blue Pearl said they have no room. They cannot take any of the dogs, period, end of story. So now we start calling around. I think they called, and me included, seven different animal hospitals. Now this is all starting. Now mind you, she, Dana picked up the puppies at one o'clock. The appointment was at three o'clock. From three o'clock till now, 8.30, right now, I have Dana and Leslie driving around with five puppies in their car. Leader in uh, Cooper City, Hollywood, took mommy and three puppies. They only wanted to take two puppies. But the third puppy started crashing and having a seizure, so they agreed to take three puppies and the mommy. So now we have five sick dying puppies in Dana's car and oh, every God. hospital is telling us they're full and I am pacing and they have been out there sitting in their cars with sick puppies in the car and trying to figure out where the hell they're going to go with all these dying dogs in the car so every hospital that we're calling is telling us no that they're completely full and they have no room meanwhile these dogs are dying and suffering I don't know if any of you know, but parvo is probably one of the most painful ways to die. They bleed out through their organs internally. They feel like shit. They feel like crap. They vomit. They seize. It's horrible. So right now, I just got off the phone with Leader, um, and I said, what is going on? What is happening? Are you keeping the third puppy that's seizing? We have five puppies sitting in the car. We need to get moving. We need to get these puppy in a hospital and hooked up to IV fluids and antibiotics. She said, yes, we're going to keep the third puppy. I'll send you the estimate. I got an estimate for two puppies for $3,000. We have eight puppies and a mommy right now. We had the owner surrender his mom, his mother dog, and his eight puppies over to our rescue not furry friends that's that's a rescue that's not an animal hospital honey but thank you <clears throat> we tried every hospital in miami that we've used in the past we've tried blue pearl coral springs at first said that they didn't have room for all of them so now we are rushing now we are rushing to coral springs they said that they will take the five remaining puppies so leslie and dana are now on their way rushing five puppies from hollywood all the way to Coral Springs with five puppies. Tampa is way too far, honey. We cannot go. We're, we're in Fort Lauderdale. These puppies are dying. We need local and we need fast. We need to be able to get these dogs into the hospital immediately. So with that being said, um, all I can tell you is knowing from experience what Parvo costs, uh, we are looking at a very, very hefty medical bill. And I don't know for how long these dogs are going to have to stay in the hospital. Uh, like I said, one is crashing. It is ridiculous. I am beside myself. I am so beside myself right now. You know, you're looking at these puppies and they're dying in front of you. And the hospitals are literally telling you they can't take your dogs as they're dying. Can you even imagine what these girls have been going through all day? So uh, Tammy had to go home to her dog. Tiffany had to go home to her dogs. Leslie called me and watched the video. And she said, Amy, I can get in my car and meet Dana. I said, please do. Carol and I were driving home. You want to talk about adding fuel to a fire, literally. Carol and I were driving home from Loxahatchee with all this going on. And as we're driving on 95, 
a car hit another car and the car rolled and flipped over all the way into the grass and smoke and fire was coming out of the car. The car was upside down on the hood down on the ground. Everybody started pulling over, us included. Seven or eight people, including my wife, literally ran and grabbed a hold of the car and flipped it upright. And there was a female, a young female inside the car. And she was literally like a pretzel on the passenger floor, bleeding, and she was breathing. Finally, we waited um, until the, the cops came and the ambulance, and we are still shaking from from seeing and witnessing what we just witnessed. So we just literally got home a little bit ago, um, got our dog settled, and I have been literally on the phone for hours trying to figure out where I am going to get these puppies safe and start them on their treatment because every minute that goes by that they're not receiving the medical is, an, is, a, is a chance they're not gonna make it through. Um, and you know, you ha these dogs are in the, the palms of our hands. They're depending on us and they're looking at us and suffering with these little faces and we can't do anything because nobody's willing to help us. I don't even know what is happening. My, I, I'm, I'm, I feel like I'm in a twilight zone. This has never happened to us before, ever, ever. And we spend so much money at these hospitals. I understand people are short staffed, they're overwhelmed, but how do you turn away dying puppies? I don't get it, I don't get it. Um, on top of that, we just pulled Araya, Aria, and Cooper out of Blue Pearl, and they are now back at Rescue House 2. Uh, tomorrow, we are picking up Balto from the neurologist at 11 o'clock in the morning. He's coming back to our rescue house. Um, we have so much on our plate, guys. We're so full, so full and overwhelmed and physically and emotionally exhausted, to say the least. I am asking, and I know Tiffany did a video earlier with the puppies and introduced you to the puppies and the mama. I don't have them in front of me. All I have in front of me is me. And all I can do is beg and plead to each and every one of you to please, please make a donation. There is almost a thousand people watching me speak and pouring my heart out to each and every one of you. There is a donate button on here. You can click the little pink heart and make a contribution. There's PayPal, there's Venmo. I am begging you, begging you. I, I did not, I didn't sign up for this. And I, if I said no, if I said no and, and played hard ass, like I was planning on doing, Dana said, Amy, you did not. I, this is not your responsibility. You told me from the beginning that if they were parvo, you couldn't take them. And I said, Dana, if I say no to you, you're going to turn around. These puppies are going to die. Nobody's going to fund these puppies. Nobody's going to be able to raise and cover this medical bill. These puppies are going to die. And she said, I know, but I don't want to put this on you. She has been sitting in her car crying. She even told Leslie, who met her at Leader Animal Hospital in Cooper City, she goes, this is my fault. I will do this. You don't have to come to Coral Springs. I'll go alone. Leslie called me. She said, Amy, I'm not letting her go alone. She's an emotional wreck. I'm going to follow her to Coral Springs. So I am so grateful for Leslie. I'm so grateful for my team. Tiffany, thank you for going there. And Tammy today, thank you so much while I was up in Loxahatchee. I couldn't be here physically, but I'm always there on the phone and, and telling them what to do and directing them. Um, but guys, I, I am at a loss right now. I'm at a loss. And, and, and we need to do, we need to raise money. We're talking literally about $3,000 a puppy. 3,000 times mm -hmm. nine. That's 27,000. And that's only for three days. That's if they don't have to stay there longer. Okay, that's $27,000. And we don't, we need your help desperately. If I said no, I am the, the, I am the decision maker. My entire team could say they want to save them. I am the one that makes the decision. I am the head of the organization. It's on me. It's on me. When I hung up with Tiffany, and I said, we cannot do this, Tiffany. We just did this. We just went through this. And then I even called Christine and Bob, our fosters for puppies. And I said, because they were supposed to take the puppies. And I said, guys, I don't know what to do. I can't do this again. 
and and then where am I going to put them after they're if they're if they make it through God willing where am I going to put them and they said Amy we will take them as long as they test negative once they're out of the hospital we will take them just get them what they need do your thing and that's what I'm doing I'm doing my thing I am begging and I'm going to keep begging we're talking $27,000 we know just the baseline for nine lives that we are trying desperately to save. Mommy is a baby herself. She's a baby. She didn't ask for this, and these puppies did not ask for this. And I am asking you, and I am begging you, please make a donation, a contribution towards this family so we can save them. Please, please. I, I just, I don't even know what else to say. I don't know what to say. I just know that if I said no, they'd be dead. They'd be dead. They'd be dead. They're dying right now. These puppies are dying. What would you do if it was you and you were in my shoes? What would you do? Could you say no? Could you play hard ass? Could you say Nope, I'm sorry. I said only we can only take them if they're parvo negative. Can't take it. What would you do? Nine. Nine. Not even just puppies. A mommy now. A mommy who tested positive. So now we're responsible for mommy and eight dying parvo puppies. They need us. They need all of you. They don't have anybody else. Like I said... If we said no, where do you think these puppies are going to go? Where are they going? Back to the owner? I mean, I was looking at videos from when Dana went to pick the puppies up, and they were in, like, some sort of a wheelbarrow thing. I mean, that's not cute to me. It's not. It's not cute to me. Yes, you can send a check and thank you in advance. There, the mailing address is on this video. Um, when I shut down, you can go back. The link has all the information, and thank you. It has the mailing address, it has the Venmo, it has the donate button right here on Facebook. I know we ask a lot, but we do a lot. We save a lot. I know you guys are drained, I'm sure. I am sure, I am drained. But if everybody can donate something, no amount is too small, just something. We have to get through. We have to, we have to cover these costs of these high medical bills. It is what it is. I don't have anything else to do but beg. That's all I can do. That's all I can do is beg. Everybody that's watching, almost 800 people, 900 people. I can't believe they're not taking the puppies either. I was blowing everybody's phone up. I was texting everybody. Thank you, Debbie, so much for your donation. Thank you, my friend. <sighs> Pauline is putting out a challenge for $100. Thank you, Miss Pauline Dunbar. Thank you. Thank you. You guys always say we're doing God's work. And, you know... We need we need a we need we need a break. We need a break. I can't close my eyes. I can't pretend it's not happening. I can't say, you know what? It's not my problem. It is our problem. It's it's we're, you know, and Carol said to me, she said, "You know, babe, God places us where he wants us to be." And you know that these puppies were placed in front of us because you know that we're the only ones that can do this. Nobody's stepping up for nine sick parvo dogs. Nobody. Nobody. I'm trying to breathe deep. Thank you, Cindy Nolan, for your $20 challenge. Thank you. Thank you, Anne Marie, for your donation. I know you would beg too, right? I, I know. I don't have any other option. I have to beg. I have to. Thank you, Ruth Ann, for your donation. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And when they're presented in front of you, and they, they're looking at you with their little eyes. I called Tiffany back. It was her and Tammy and Dana with the dogs in the car. Um, and they said, Amy, 
what do you want? What are we going to do? And I, and you know, they, it's, po it's positive. And I said, no. And then I called her back literally two seconds later. And I said, Tiffany, get them to Blue Pearl. Get them to Blue Pearl. I can't let them die. I can't let them die on my watch. I can't. And she said, Amy, thank you so much because I was beside myself. I was hysterical. I just, I, 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 I said, Tiffany, I can't imagine you having, you know, to make the call to me and, and then me saying no to you. And I put myself in her shoes. If, if the roles were reversed and I had to call her and I was there with the puppies and then they came out positive knowing that those puppies are going to die. And I said, that's, that's just not who we are. It's not who we are. And you know what? We'll figure it out, I guess. We'll figure it out. It's been a very, very hard day. A very hard day. A lot. My wife, Carol's in the house shaking still. She's a mess. She's like, I'm going to bed early. I can't, I can't take anymore. Um, today is Pride. It's gay pride. And it's right downtown here. Carol and I usually go every single year. We haven't gone for the past few years because we just don't want to be around crowds and people. The world is crazy. We don't want to be around it. And we're watching all of our friends going and getting ready to go and celebrate Pride. And um, she just read to me that uh, a car, there's, it's all staged, the roads are all closed off, and a car drove into a, a pile of people. It looks like it was intentional. Um, two people were announced dead and a lot injured, right down the street from our house in Wilton Manors. So it's, there's just a lot. We don't even know if any of our friends are, are there. What's, we're all, a lot of our friends are there. We don't know what's going on. I, I don't know what's going on with the world today, honestly. I don't understand it. I just don't get it. Thank you, Kimberly. Thank you. I'm trying to find light. I was over there. It was dark, and I want to be able to see you, and I want you to be able to see me. I know. I know. I just, every time I turn around, another litter, another, the mailing address, Linda Glunt, is, is right on this video. When I shut down, it's right here. I put it in the verbiage, but I, apparently you can't see it when I'm on live talking. Um, but when I shut down, if you go back to our page, 100 plus abandoned dogs of Everglades, Florida, uh, it's right there for you. Thank you, Lisa. Yes, Balta's doing great. Balta's doing really great. The this, this surgery went very smoothly. Um, and uh, Elizabeth, I see you just came on and you're saying what's going on. Um, I'm sorry, I can't repeat from the beginning. You're going to have to sh when I, wait till I shut down and go back and listen. I'm talking and begging right now from my entire team here at 100 plus. Um, we, we took in a mummy, a young mommy, and eight puppies. Um, I told a friend of mine, Dana, that I would only take them if they were tested for parvo and they came out negative because we just went through this with the husky mixes and it cost our, our rescue a fortune like eighteen thousand uh, dollars we're still recuperating so we said we would take mommy we would take the puppies um, if they were negative and when they came to our animal hospital and they tested the first puppy it was positive and then they tested mommy and she was positive and we know from that that the rest of them are positive positive. and if they're not they're going to be positive so I said no I can't take them I can't I just can't afford this after what we just went through and everything that we have going on and then after thinking about it for two seconds I said if I say no they're gonna die so I called Tiffany back and I said get them to Blue Pearl Animal Hospital which is where we take all of our dogs and she said they're full they won't take them and I'm like what so I started texting um, my contacts there and they hadn't answered me. I said, it's urgent, I need to speak with you, nobody's answering me. And then we started calling around different hospitals, Knowles in Miami, they said no. Coral Springs, they said they couldn't. Um, Leslie called me and said Leader in Cooper City said to bring the whole family, they would take them. So they ran over to Leader and as they're there, still they just left there from, they started at three o'clock today. The appointment started at 3 o'clock for the testing at VCA. It's now almost 9 o'clock, and they've been sitting at Leader. Um, they took in the th three puppies and the mommy, and they said they were only going to keep two puppies and the mommy. And when they handed back the one puppy to my girls, Leslie and Dana, the puppy started seizing, and they pounded on the door, and they gave back the sick puppy. 
because they didn't think they would make the, that puppy would make it to the next animal hospital. And in the meantime, they have five puppies still in the car that are sick and lethargic, and they won't take the puppies. So we just called Coral Springs, and now Coral Springs said they would take the five puppies. So we have now, I just got off the phone with Leader, and I said, what is going on there? You have three puppies in there. You have Mommy. Mm-hmm. We have a car full of five puppies. I need to know what's happening, and I need to get out of there, and I need my girls to get to the next hospital because these dogs are dying in the car. So they said, yes, you can go. So I called Leslie, and I said, Leslie, go to Coral Springs. Get Dana, go to Coral Springs. So they're on their way to Coral Springs with five dying Parvo puppies in the car from 3 o'clock this afternoon, and it's almost 9 p.m. And all I can tell you, is that I need you guys now so very much. I need your help. I need donations. I can't. I can't do it. We can't do it. We can't. The bill's going to cost us over $27,000. The estimate is $3,000 a puppy. That's only for a couple of days. Puppies we know at Blue Pearl, the last puppies, they were there for almost two weeks. So we're talking three days at $27,000. For nine lives. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? Pauline. Carol just said you just donated a thousand dollars. Pauline Dunbar. Are you kidding me right now? Pauline, you are one. You are amazing. You are amazing. I don't even know what to say. I don't even know what to say, Pauline. You are just so amazing. Thank you. Thank you so much, Pauline Dunbar from Texas. Thank you so much. You guys are off the chart amazing. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. This is just so overwhelming sometimes. It's so hard. You try to be strong and you try to just keep pushing forward and then you just keep getting these thrown at you. And I feel like sometimes that I am just like playing God. I don't want to play God. I don't want to play God. I just want it to stop. I just don't. I want all the suffering to stop. I want all these helpless poor animals that are suffering. They're, they're, they're just suffering whether they're on the streets or the shelters or it's just so hard. It's so hard. And when you're taking care of them every day day and you're with them and you see what they go through it's so hard it's so hard Pauline thank you thanks for throwing me over the edge and I'm sorry for breaking down I'm very very sorry thank you Angie thank you Ellen All I'm asking for right now, so much going on, Susan. So much. You have no idea. God does choose us for a reason. God chooses us for a reason. And I know I keep telling myself that and I believe it. But it's so hard when you're just like, you're, you're up to here and then this comes at you. And I was, as it was happening... I'm walking around the new rescue house and I'm thinking, you know, this was supposed to be like a happy day and we're supposed to be enjoying and and setting up and, you know, we're sweating and we're unpacking trucks and and we're painting and, and I'm like, I just want to enjoy one day. I just want one day without like an emergency coming at me where I feel like I I can't breathe and I'm always stressed and and my whole body's tense and I can't relax. I can't unwind. Carol's in there like I got to go to I've got to go to bed early. I can't take any more. I can't take any more stress. It's just it's so hard some days. It's so hard. And I'm so worried about these babies. They don't deserve this. You look in their little faces and you look in their little eyes and they're painful and they're suffering. And, and it's like, they're like all they're you're all they have and they're counting on you. And if you don't do what you can to help them, they're going to die. How do you turn away from that? How do you just turn away and say, um, it's not my problem. I can't take any more. Nope. Nope. 
take them back to the owner. They'll be dead. They'll be dying. They'll be bleeding out internally. That's what happens with parvo. They bleed out through their organs internally. It is such a painful, painful death for puppies and for dogs that have parvo. Pauline Dunbar just donated $1,000, our friend Pauline from Texas. She is an amazing human being. We have met her several times. She has come here. She is to our events. She is like family to us, and we are so grateful. And we're so grateful to each and every one of you that is making a contribution. Don't think we don't know who you are. Every one of you, whether you donate a dollar, two dollars, whatever, it is so appreciated so appreciated and if everybody donated something it adds up so quickly that's what i keep saying and in the and the pride the pride that we we're supposed we don't have any pride there's no pride when it comes to these dogs that are looking at you and need you there's no pride people say i can't do videos i can't beg amy well you know what start begging when these lives are depending on you when they need you you have to do what everything, anything you can in your power to save them. And I don't even know what's happening right now. I just know that three of the puppies and the mom are at leader and I, uh, they're getting taken care of. I don't know with the five puppies. I don't know how they're doing in the car. I'm praying to God that they're okay and they make it to the hospital in time. But they're rushing there. They're on their way to Coral Springs right now with the five remaining puppies. So we're talking nine lives all together at $27,000 for for just two days to get them started on treatment oh god and tomorrow we're going to get balto from a second shunt surgery poor balto he doesn't even care he just doesn't even know what's going on he's running around he doesn't care I'm just trying to read through the comments. I'm trying to see if I can answer anybody. She is an amazing angel. She is an amazing person. And Pauline is not rich. She's not rich monetarily. She's amazing. Amazing. You guys are just amazing. Thank you, Linda. I'm still seeing this. I'm just still seeing so much that's happening. Just so much that's happening. Blue Pearl would not take them. They said no. They said that they were full. And I know they've been overwhelmed and I know they've been short staffed. I'm, I'm shocked because they've always, they never say no to us. Um, but they said no, they didn't have any room. I think they're short handed. But I was just like, why? I couldn't believe that they, they couldn't help. They said no. Blue Pearl couldn't take them. At first, Coral Springs couldn't take them. Knowles couldn't take them. Um, some other 24-hour hospital in Miami. Then our wonderful volunteer, Anna, was texting me that someplace in Boynton said they would take them. But I was so worried about getting the puppies quickly to the hospital. And when Leslie called me and said Leader in Cooper City could take them, I said, great, get them. I sent the address to Dana, get them there. And then when they got there, then they said they couldn't take them, that they could only take two puppies. And one of the puppies crashed and they were pounding on the door in desperation. Open the door, open the door. One of the puppies is crashing, so they grab the puppy. Then I called them to say, what's going on? Are you taking the third puppy Are you that's crashing? Will you take except the third puppy with the mom? We have five puppies that are dying in the car. Can we, can we, we have to leave. We have to get them to another hospital. And they said, yes, you can go. Thanks. Thanks. I, I am at a loss. I'm at a loss. And I just want to say, please donate and thank you. Um, as soon as I hear back from Leslie, because right now, all I know is that they are on their way to Coral Springs with five 
puppies. So right when I hear back and I get a call from the animal hospital, I don't care what time it is tonight, it's 9 o'clock. I know me, and I know I'm not going to be sleeping tonight. I just know I'm not going to be sleeping. So when I get a call from the hospital um, and I get an update from Leader um, and from Coral Springs and I know what's happening, I'm going to hop back on here. And it may be 10.30, it may be 11 o'clock, it may be midnight. I don't know, but I will hop on here. Um, and I will update you guys and let you know what's happening. I promise. For now, I'm just going to go take a breather. Um, and thank you so very, very, very much to each and every one of you that are helping us save this family. Because this is a lot on our team. A lot. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. This is Amy with 100 Plus Abandoned Dogs of Everglades, Florida. And I will be back live as soon as I get more of an update. Right now, this is all I have for you. Thank you.